again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrett. Thank you for watching. Um, if you don't know, we do this on Facebook Live also. We do, and we managed, we think we shared it to like our pages and our know. profiles and stuff. It's this hard. Time. Part so of the problem I have is I refuse to put Facebook, install Facebook on my phone. So everything to do with Facebook Live has to be on my laptop. Oh, okay. So when I say I want to watch it in my, oh, then it would make me, I, I won't do it. Well, anyway, basically Anyways. the long and the short of it is we're trying to build our audience. We want to get the message of liberty out there yes. to the people so that they yes. can understand that, you know, this yeah. is an important thing. It and is. It's something we should care about and it's well, really and, something and, we and should focus on. Even just Manchester on. in general, I know how hard it is to keep up with what's going on in our city. You know, you even, I, I think we're both fairly in touch inform people and then people still don't know i just just before i left here um a friend of mine posted th how frustrated he was because he had to go get a building permit because he was replacing windows so he should just be annoyed and we should just stop there but he went to city hall and he was unaware that there was all this renovation stuff going on at city hall now i get the nixle alerts mm -hmm. so i like i have to register my car this month and I'm like, oh, now it's at a thousand Elm Street. Eh, I'm not going to tell you it's in the rain. But at least I've got it in my head that I, before I was going to go to City Hall for anything, I would probably search. But they don't have it on the actual websites. So you might go out to the building department's website or planning or whichever one the permits permission process comes from. But if it doesn't say right there, you know, alert, we're not going to be in our regular office. We're going to be at this other location. So he goes all the way to City Hall, goes there, finds out. So then now he's driving around like doubly annoyed, which I can't really blame. Yeah, you know, and, and, and the double annoyance, of course, is now you have to pay some kind of fine in order to improve your own right. property. And they want your money. Windows. What is the you know. Are they going to come and inspect every window? That's insane. It's insane. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a very much anti-permits. Just am. There, I just don't get it. Like, it's my property. If my insurance company wants to require me to have an inspection done, then fine. If my bank wants to require that I have an inspection done, fine. But I just don't understand why the government can tell anybody that if you want to replace your windows. And then Keith Murphy commented that he was told, he's not sure if it's accurate or not, that he would have to get a permit to paint his building. I mean, That's that, nuts. Th uh, that wouldn't surprise me at all. <laughs> it just wouldn't. I woke up. I'm very, very She's cranky today. today but that's so okay. I'm just gonna, you know, sort of sit on my hands because I think if I unleash my frustration, no, no, on no, the it's world, fine. It's, it's fine. Uh, There's not. I get frustrated sometimes. Um, well, I just get, you know, I, I, I feel like. You're banging your head against the wall? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a bit of that, but it's also like, I, I do feel that especially here in New Hampshire, where we have this sort of unique state yeah. where, uh, you know, I mean, our, our slogan is live free or die. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like to think that's not just lip service. Um, and I think we have a duty and I think public officials and I think journalists and I think the union leader editor all have a duty to call things out when people are doing the wrong things. Right. And, you know, I'm back at the use of force thing, and I yeah. hate that people are like, oh, you are that's a, all you talk about. And I'm like, I only talk force, about this mm -hmm. because force really when does, it comes up. But rea the reality is, is use of force is a, in many ways a very broad term because we can be talking about use of force like physical force, but the threat, I mean, we are forced to do things. Mike's forced <laughs> to get a permit to replace windows in his house because there is a threat of force because if he doesn't do it, he could be fined or he could be required to take the windows back out, which would cost him money. And I, I do get frustrated and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I didn't really wanna talk, this wasn't what I was thinking of talking about, but um, just gonna put this out there for the record. I'm not a free stater. I've lived in Manchester, you know, sit, I bought my house in 97. I don't even know if Jason Sorens was in college, let alone had written a paper by 1997. <laughs> he had so, not. Right. He so, was in college. He, right, but but I, I, I've been here a long time. I moved to New Hampshire probably for exactly the same reasons, though, that other pe that a lot of people who are of, that um, signed the it, the pledge or whatever it's called with Statement the free state of intent. Right. Yeah. 
come for, to New Hampshire. I probably came for the same reasons. There was a lot of opportunity in New Hampshire. I came from, I'm originally from upstate New York. Things were dismal. Um, job boss prospects were awful. It just was awful. And New Hampshire was like this little beacon of like, look at that. There's jobs and everything's I mean, wonderful. And so, it still is and in it New is. England. And, you know? you know, in the early, in the 2000s, you know, the Free State Project came about and I always, I've known people who moved here way back when there was, you know, 20 or 30 people. Um, I know a lot of people of, connected to the Free State Project. I, the, that organization, that group of people, just like every single group of people that you ever put together, has a wide variety of personalities, a wide variety of views. And me, as somebody who's not a free stater, it aggravates the crap out of me when people paint every single person who ever signed the letter, the letter of intent with the Free State Project that they're all identical. So and just to put this, this in there. context for, for folks back home. So over the weekend on Sunday, uh, the union leader had two editorials, not one, but two, uh, mentioning free staters. Uh, both were in a pretty negative context. Mm -hmm. The one had to do with a settlement payment that was paid out this month uh, by the city of Manchester for a incident where someone recorded a police officer during a DUI checkpoint. Um, the fact that the settlement was paid, I think, indicates, you know, who was right and wrong in this. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I was instrumental in a court case uh, back in 2010 was when I was arrested and in 2014 was when um, the case was heard. And basically, it was a First Amendment case that said, of course, in a free society, you're allowed to film police officers. Um, when they're on the clock in public, um, you know, and that's protected First Amendment speech. Um, I have always said people should not interfere, as far yep. as I know, in this settlement case, there was no interference. Um, and, you know, so I feel like many of these free staters and activists who go out and do these things, much like I did, I mean, in my case, I was 30 feet away from the officers, I was behind a fence. Uh, to this day, I laugh every time people ask me, how do I know they lied in the police report? And I'm like, well, well because I was, I was there. there and they said I parked in the middle of the street and ran down the road yelling, remember the cause, <laughs> which did not happen, which was such a blatant lie, which was pretty much where I started to feel like, wow, maybe we should be keeping a better eye on the people who actually have the right to use force against people. So when I see things like the kid at Keene State High School who is 15 years old, who is walking out of a bathroom, and I see a uniformed police officer tackle, attack, assault a child from behind, I find it upsetting. In that case, nothing has happened to the police officer. They deem the use of force to be justified. The kid who filmed the video has been suspended and has been, uh, I think, suspended for uh, certain after-school activities um, and was punished, as was the child who was attacked. So I think when the union leader refuses to judge the use of force, which I contend would be really their only job as the newspaper of record, is to start to say, you know what, maybe this is not civilized acceptable behavior. But no, instead of doing that, they come after free staters. They insult us when we're doing the job of the press. We are out there filming these things, talking about these things, and saying these things are unacceptable. So you know what? There Tonight, there's a First Amendment is, uh, uh, the event yep. over the, at the Naki Loeb Awards. It's, uh, it's at the Palace Theater. Yep. I, I'm going to go tonight. Hopefully, we can talk to some of these people and remind them what the duty of the Fourth Estate is. So that's all I'm going to say well, about it, any it, of this. But, you know, tomorrow, actually, no. Yeah, there's I'm more. Done. No. <laughs> no, there's, there's more. more. Um, tomorrow would be Wednesday. So, tomorrow is Wednesday, so that'll be November 20th, uh, for, you know, if this airs today. Uh, there'll be three Supreme Court cases oh, yeah. that are being heard um, that all have to do with right to know. So Tammy and uh, Dan actually came to the right, right to know meeting on Saturday. 
Uh, it was very it was interesting. interesting. It was very interesting. So there was this lady uh, from Nashua. She's sort of a, a whistleblower on the tax assessor, yeah. assessor situation in Nashua. And, you know, she sort of came to tell her story. And then uh, Jen Schmidt, who's, who's a, a state alderman rep, and a state rep. From, uh, Nashua. from Nashua came because she's proposed some uh, amendments to the right to know bill, which she claimed was to address some of the problems that uh, Lori, the lady from Nashua, had experienced. I mean, it turns out that's not the case at all. The bills that Jen Schmidt is introducing will restrict and limit our ever increasing limited rights to get information from our government. So while they are stealing all our privacy, they are keeping more and more secrets from us while saying that they can attack children from behind with no repercussions. So that's where we are. That's where we are in the Granite State. That's why I'm irked, mad, annoyed. <laughs> and um, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to shut up. All these people who criticize me, all these nope. people who come after me, you can keep writing those editorials. I am not going to stop because I know I am right and you are wrong. Not you watching. Them. 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 But it is true. And it annoys me. And I'm not a free stater. And it still annoys me because... Well, the, I just don't like, I, 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 I tried to pull well, it up on my phone. the collectivization, right? Well, that's so, a problem. So I'm like, okay, so, so I'm going to, you know, I, uh, so, so when you read reports of, of uh, murder, suicides, uh, serial killers, whatever, right? No one ever goes, oh, Are this was a Democrat, well, this or, was a Catholic, right. this was a whatever. Right. I mean, we're at this stage where actually in unions and several state agencies, <laughs> they will ask. Yes. Are you or have you ever been a free stater? Right. Now, you know, last time I looked, most of us who understand what a free society looks like understand that that well, was I mean, McCarthyism, I always, and we didn't think it was a good I idea always, the first time. I always did when people, you know, somebody says, well, this, I always say, well, you know, I always throw in Catholic, and it's just nothing against Catholics. It's just, would it be okay if somebody asked you if you were Catholic? You know, because that would be kind of weird. You'd be like, well, why is, what is the relevancy of that? Um and I mean, but meanwhile, is it okay if we start asking people if they belong to a teacher's union or a state employment? You know, I mean, that, that should probably be the thing, because that is probably the group of people that most um, go after free staters in general. Or they're the ones who, you know, paint the, paint the, um, the label. Because I look at everybody, every, every, free, every person who signs that letter of intent and moves to New Hampshire moves here for their own personal reasons, what they choose to do with when they get here is their own personal decisions. There is no big cabal. There is no I secret mean, movement. And you know what? Some people, Carrie. some people who move here, I think, are productive members of our of the community I l choose to live in. And others, I just think, are just another person that. Oh, I'm, you mean like, like literally the entire world? I mean, that right. defines That's the entire I mean, world. I don't necessarily like my neighbor. I don't know. Like, the, I don't have to know where they're from. I don't have to know why they decided to move to my street. I don't. It's none of my business. I moved here for. For reasons? I mean, I guess part of the reason why I'm so annoyed is I don't feel like uh, journalists, the newspapers, the people who actually are supposed to be yeah. to, to, be, to objective be helping and the public, right, who are supposed to actually hold our officials accountable. Um, I mean, the union leader together with five other newspapers in New Hampshire are in a Supreme Court lawsuit where the... A judge, Judge Temple, in April said this list of bad cops who get on a list after they have followed a 20-page procedure yep. where their own police chief says this is some shady, shady stuff. That's how you get on the list. They want to keep a list of bad cops secret from the public, and they have the temerity to say that it is not in the public interest to know who these people are. Now, I cannot ask you to explain to me <laughs> what more could be in the public interest than to know which officers should not... I mean, I'm not even saying they shouldn't have their jobs. Oh, I, not even I said there that yet. last night. I'm like, I don't understand how if anybody does something that puts them on that list, how they still are employed. I'm well, sorry. Well, but that's why they don't even want to release the list, right? Now because we might question. now we're, we're like, oh, but you know what will happen? Exactly what happened with the assessor from Nashua, just to yeah. finish that. Yeah. 
so so this Lori lady tells us right that um, so she's she her story is pretty much she bought a really fancy house in downtown Nashua when she got her first tax bill her tax bill was eighteen thousand dollars she asked her neighbors she was like wow this is more than double what everyone else is pay paying why is this yep. as she started to do more digging as she started to use the right to know to try and find out uh, she uncovered a lot of sort of uh, just bad policies. Yeah, bad and just practices. people not really doing their jobs right. The assessor, yeah. I guess that there was a private eye who followed him around. He would just sleep in the parking lot and then, you know, so anyway, so that guy eventually got fired. Yes, good. That's how the system's supposed to work. You don't do your work, you don't get a job. So he just, he left Nashua and I hate to break the news to you folks in Hillsborough. Hooks it. No, Hooks it. Oh, is it H Hooks it. Hooks he it. is now the chief assessor in Hooks it. So the guy who was doing such a bad job in Nashua, so what is, is now in charge and hooks it. So what's going to happen, of course, uh, you know, if, if, and I think it's a big if, and that is part of what's so troubling, the Lori's List, the exculpatory evidence schedule is released, then we're going to actually have to be accountable and we're going to have to look and we're going to have to say, where are these officers? Yes. Have they seen the error of their ways. Right, because right, maybe, um, you know. Because that's also a very important part of this. Like, I'm a big proponent of accountability. I'm also a proponent of forgiveness. Right, because so it's, it's someone's just like, oh, mia culpa. You know, if the union leader wants to go ahead and be like, you know what? Carla's right. <laughs> we were wrong. We should judge this use of force. We should say that we don't think actually grown-ups tackling children from behind is something we we want to say is kind of our policy um i would happily welcome that i am willing to say that people may make mistakes i'm even willing to say i understand that officers can get irked and annoyed right. and all of those things as well right but the point is when we are systematically creating this environment that protects bad apples and Everyone back home needs to know this too. So I have gone and testified at the state house where they have had people from the police unions and from the state troopers union, and they have come and they will sit down and they will say to our legislators, no one here likes bad cops. We don't like bad apples. We take care of that problem. They don't. They filed a brief for tomorrow's hearing to say that that list should not be made public. Now, I don't know how else to look at it than yep. to say you are protecting bad apples. Yep. And bad apples spoil the bunch. So the point is, love me, hate me, most of you hate me. No, I don't you. care. I am here to tell you that there is a problem and we need to fix it. And the only way we're going to fix it is with people like me who are willing to say this is not acceptable. So people can either get on board and start to say we're going to have a civilized, decent society. We can't fix everywhere. We can't fix the world. We can't fix America, but we can fix the Granite State. And that's what I want to do. And it starts with us cleaning house and saying this kind of behavior is not acceptable. And this is why I didn't want to do the show today because I am mad. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to change subject because right. I got something else to be mad about. So do you ski? I don't ski. I don't ski in New Hampshire because you got to well, be really so good. <laughs> the Democrats in Concord literally... I think would tax everything if they could. Well, I know they wanted to tax our canoes last right. time. Canoe. Well, now they're trying. I think there's. I do think there's another bill, and now maybe to make it a voluntary fee to register my kayak or some crazy. So is, is that like voluntary? Where they're going to? Char, I don't know. Can I finish yes. just one last thing before yes. I forget? So this lady from from Nashville <laughs> with the tax assessor story. The final part of her story was that one Saturday she was sitting at home oh, yeah. and the doorbell rang and she went to the door and there were two Nashua police officers who came to her door on a Saturday afternoon to express a oral restraining, verbal restraining order, order. I was like, I don't a think verbal that's a restraining order because she that was causing she needs to not file right to no request and she should really leave this issue alone. Now take or leave that story for what it is. <laughs> okay, skiing. So, uh, rep a Democrat representative, Craig Thompson from Harrisville, wherever the heck Harrisville is, I'm guessing it's got probably closer to ski places than where Manchester is. Um, <laughs> 
is put in a, a LSR because nothing's actually a bill yet. But he would like a nine. Per, he would like to extend the rooms and meals tax. Now, can't remember rooms and meals. Guess what that covers? Rooms and meals. He would like to extend the rooms and meals tax to ski lift tickets, which do not include a room or a meal. So that would be charging a nine percent state tax on every ski lift ticket. Which I was like, okay, let's think, bring this down to a, a practical level. Here in Manchester, we have the McIntyre Ski Area. You can get more information there by going to McIntyre, that's M C I N T Y R E, ski area.com, because they sell ski lift tickets and all sorts of things. So the tickets run anywhere from like $30 to $40 some dollars, depending on if you're a kid or not. But let's just take the $30 ticket 9% is $2.70. So for some reason, if somebody wants to go skiing in Manchester, just go outside and enjoy the winter, they should somehow have to pay $2.70 to the state. And you might ask, well, what would this money go for? Is this going to improve our out, our mountains in New Hampshire? Is this to you know provide ski passes for indigent children, uh, right? Oh no, it is to provide um, college and vocational courses for inmates at, in the state prison system. And I'm gonna come back because I think that it's not a bad idea. I just don't think you should tax skiers for it. <laughs> and also to provide middle class college tuition scholarships. Because somehow the kids skiing at McIntyre should fund inmate education and college for certain middle class. What? This is insane. This, I you mean, read this it's... stuff and you go, this can't be real. But it is real. And I, I, I just don't even... I, yeah, the good thing is Governor Sununu, who used to run a ski resort, yeah, he said if by some crazy chance this got to his desk, he would veto it faster than ever. And he can't even imagine that it wouldn't be sustained because no, you don't do this. Well, well, and I, I bet you, I mean, we would have to go back and look at the history, but I'm almost 100% sure when the meals and room tax started, do you know what the rate was? Oh, it, it was much lower. It was and, a nine percent, and, and much I'm more of it sure. went back to the community. R right. So, so my point just being, doesn't matter what no. they say it's for or how 9%. it starts. It'll it's, start. It'll become more. They will waste yeah. it. It'll be inefficient. There are better ways. Well, I mean, it's can, called the free tell market. me you can't uh, see this. So we've got a nine percent, which is insane, by the way. The fact that New Hampshire has a nine percent room and meals tax is onerous beyond belief, but that's another argument. So let's say we do this, say that this some by some crazy craziness um, became law. So we're gonna charge 9% if you wanna buy a, a ski lift ticket, not a season pass. Season passes wouldn't be t taxed, only day tickets. Oh, wow. That's even silly. Right. Well, it's just inconsistent. Because I, mean, I, because I could see this being sort of a hidden Democrat wealth tax, yes. right? Oh, you like the ski, so we're going to take your a money. But a season but, pass. Right. So, okay, so they're, they're, but then you know if this passed, then they would add in season lift tickets because somebody would come back and say, well, why not those skiers? And then I'm thinking, well, and what about, does this include, what about like the snow tubing? Are we going to charge little kids for snow tubing? Should we tax the children so that the inmates or whoever the Democrats decide they need some of somebody else's money for? And I thought, wow, this is just this is just like the epitome, though, that listening to Jan Schmidt talk about her wonderful amendments that would make things better for the right to know community. They were all awful. They one of them was. I mean, one was literally to strike a, a, a roll call requirement on... Yes. So, so roll calls is the only way we can actually hold our legislators well, accountable, and, and, right? Yes. And so the bill, and it was, I think it was for phone conferences, yes, right? Yes, because so you're sometimes... you're taking the uh, notes, which I do in a lot of cases, you know, often you're like, who was that? Was that old age? Right. You know, did someone oppose, right? So you want it to be roll call so you can just go, okay, so you we actually know have a number who, of who. And, and, and we have a record of who did what. So she, she I mean. She wants her, to eliminate that, that requirement. That would be struck. So it's like, you're that... telling me, like you're literally coming here and bold-faced lying <laughs> to us. She, well, she was very adamant about it. She had another one that said something like, um, if, if the right to know request, which well, let's start with this. If the fa if it takes more than five hours to find information that is should be provided to me as a citizen, perhaps that information needs to be more readily available. <laughs> but she has a proposal that says, if it takes five hours or more, 
then the person requesting the information would have to pay the salary and the benefits, benefits. and everything for the person, not for so, the so, lowest so, price so, so the government, who are supposed to be open, transparent, accountable, could build the heck out of to, people. To, to the people, are now saying, in order for us to be open, transparent, accountable to the people for the money we were already taking from you that you might want to know what we did with, yeah. Now we're going to charge you extra in order to get that. I, you know, honestly, I'm like at the stage where we could just take the whole 91A bill away yeah. and just rely on the New Hampshire Constitution. It is very clear. We have the right to privacy. They have to be open to us. You should be able to go and ask for anything. And if there's a privacy concern with regard to a citizen, then, I mean, I'm pretty sure we could just do the ombudsman one that we talked yep. about that we've been trying to pass for I don't know how yep. many we'll years. Have somebody else look at it. And, and then read have, it. Right. And just have one there's person. There's attorneys. You know? I mean, it can be an attorney. I'm okay with that. It's because just... the other thing that they're doing, of course, is they want it to seem like this is an onerous, onerous yes. burden on oh. them well, she tried so to that say, they can She tried um, to say that 91A requests, I think, I don't know if it was all 91A requests or Lori's 91A request. She's trying to say that that cost the taxpayers $50,000, which I'm sorry is nonsense. But okay, on to happier things. <laughs> so, um, can we do Christmas carols? Yeah, let's do Christmas or something or something. good. <laughs> so, um, uh, the Nutcracker starts next weekend, Friday, November 29th, at the Palace Theater. Um, and then the following week, the Christmas carol starts over there. Dan and I, this Thursday night, are going to the Rex Theater to see. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which oh, is fun. basically Narnia. Um, a little tricky to get tickets. You can't buy them online. They, they, you see it on the Palace website's list, but then you have to call the Rex, which he did, oh, and gave okay. him his credit card. So it's a little wonky. They haven't got their website up and running yet. But it's only 15 bucks a person. So oh, it's general admission seating. So it'll be interesting. We have no idea. Right. Is I, it would, a, I, I have no idea if it's a children's space. production. It could be, you know, I who knows? It could be in a different language. I have no idea. So we're going to go there Thursday night. I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll report back next week. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of good stuff. Look, I'm like, oh, good thing we didn't talk about that today. Um, the Christmas parade, I think it is, is on, I think, December 4th. Um, that goes down Elm Street. So, you know, there's so many great restaurants now on Elm Street. So many places you can sit and have lunch and watch, watch. the parade, which is kind of Although cool. I did see when we came up this morning that the tables are not outside. No. I think it's It's past gloomy, the time past, and whatever. Yeah. Um, I also saw that uh, Lorena's can Cantina closed, which I was quite oh, surprised because really? they had really good food. Um, but I, there's another, there's some blues place going in down there. It's just always interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of change. Yeah. It's, and, and restaurants, that's a Restaurants come and go. It is. Restaurant yeah. business is a very tough industry to be in. Um, so... If you have any comments, concerns, <laughs> um, opinions, hey, you know, anything you want to yell at Carla, whatever. Yell um, away, folks. You can, I'm not going to shut up. You can find, we have a Facebook page, Manch Talk. Um, you can email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. Um, one of us would probably respond to you unless you were really, really rude, and then we probably wouldn't. Um, but if you have any ideas for shows, or if there's something you want me to include in the holiday calendar stuff, because we're going to do that more, if you know about it, like a great fundraiser for some organizations, oh, fun, um, yeah. you know, by all means, send them our way, because we'd like to let people know about events before they actually happen. Um, but otherwise, I think we're going to go get you a coffee. <laughs> <Maybe> and <not. laughs> um, we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>